is the last Azarius place of 2020, which is kind of crazy to think about. But anyways, this is Azarius place. I'm Azaria. This is my place. Welcome back. And um, yeah, all that jazz. Whatever. I'm gonna tie my hair back because it's getting on my nerves. The original score was by Trent Razner. I'm hot. Hi everybody and welcome back to Azaria's Place. I am very excited to talk about today's topic because there are so many things I want to address. I'm going to start with the good that is soul and then I want to get into some more serious stuff. I know I tried to steer away from that with my Mulan reaction video just because I was not well informed about this but this one sits a little closer to home. I want to first start by saying soul is a good movie. It's a great movie. I want to start by saying that but we can't talk about the good and not address the bad. I think I wanted to kind of also use this video as a way to promote not just, you know, my mantra of be kind, but also be empathetic and um, think about what I'm saying. Uh, but like I said, I'm gonna start with my review of the movie first, and then I'm gonna get into what I like to call the soul of soul, which is going to extend from this movie a bit because I don't think that it's limited to just soul. Let's get into it. Let's just get into the movie. Soul uh, premiered on Disney Plus on December 25th, Christmas Day, and there was no premiere access, which was kind of beautiful. No $30 paid for this. You just got it with your subscription. This movie was headed by Pete Doctor, and they later brought on Kemp Powers to also assist with the direction and the story and the screenplay. And it was produced by Donna Murray. And of course, this is a Pixar animation film, which Pixar just has a way at tugging at your heartstrings. And this one was just, it was so interesting just to see um, this type of story in Disney. And I know that they put in a lot of extra help with this film. Like I said, Ken Powers was brought on later in the film's production. Um, and I think it was said that when he came on, he felt it was in pretty rough shape. Soul follows a uh, African-American man named Joe Gardner, who is a middle school band teacher, and he has dreams of being a musician. Uh, his family, not so, not terribly unsupportive, but not terribly supportive either. And jazz is his true passion in life, but he then quickly meets his end and is transported to another realm, which is the great beyond, almost. He almost makes it to the great beyond, but instead goes to the great before and meets a infant, unborn soul named 22. And they kind of go on a journey together and then he discovers what it truly means to have a soul or to have a soul slash to live. I think that the plot of this film, very interesting, but the cast of this film included Jamie Foxx as Joe, Tina Fey as 22, Graham Norton as Moonwin, which I think is kind of hysterical. I didn't even put two and two together when I heard the voice. I immediately noticed Alice Braga as one of the Jerry's. Rachel House voiced Terry, which I think we all love. Felicia Rashad was Libba or Joe's mom. Also featured in this film are people like Divi Diggs, Angela Bassett, Questlove, Margot Hall, etc, etc. I think it was a great film. I think that, first of all, the animation quality, sickening. Like, it was so ridiculous. I thought that Frozen 2 was out of this world in terms of animation quality, but this was ridiculous. I think overall the movie was, it was funny, it was heartwarming, and it was also just, it was just a good time. It was just a good time. The score behind this film was also kind of ridiculous. It was using sounds to enhance how you're supposed to feel. And I think we see that perfectly in the in the zone um, moments. I think that that was really interesting. The score featured original compositions and arrangements by John Baptiste, and also an original score by Trent Rasner and Atticus Ross. I could say so many good things about this film. I really could. I think my big moments were, um, where I know that I physically reacted was the haircut moment, uh, where when Joe is the cat, oh man, I, I just thought of another moment that made me laugh, <laughs> um, but when Joe's the cat and he tries to give himself, um, it's like I'm just gonna line myself up and he's shaking, he's literally shaking because he's a cat, it's like vibrating so much, and then he 
accidentally like shaves all I know I physically reacted to that because I was just like oh no I know how I feel when I feel like my hair is like a mess I felt that one and I loved the great beyond music was so ridiculous like that random like wong sound <laughs> I I died the cat going into the great beyond hilarious but also confusing because the cat is still very much alive so still kind of confusing but I did love the great beyond music that got me every single time and I love this idea of us all having this spark within us and the spark is not your purpose the spark is when you're ready to live which I think is interesting that you get your spark when you're born like you're born with your spark you just don't realize your spark I guess and I think that it creates that really interesting conflict for 22 because 22 doesn't see the point in living doesn't really want to do it but when you realize the beauty that is life um and I think it's interesting how they 22 noticed it specifically in nature when the helicopter flies into Joe's hand um when 22 is Joe and realizes that there's a beauty to it all and decides this is my moment that I want to live. It was very uh, captivating and I loved this lost soul idea as well. You know, these things that we become obsessed with. We're living through the motions, we're not really living in the moment. It struck some chords, it's just interesting, um, just to think about. Yeah, I loved the Jerry's and I loved Terry. Terry was very funny. I just, I think even the way that they did this, uh, one of the articles I read said that the counselors were meant to be kind of like wires that you bend into shape which I thought was super cool so they basically could like shape shift into anything which was ridiculous it was so cool to see um it was interesting that it felt like a blend of animations um as well because of it I felt like the New York animation was so different from the great before animation um it was weird to think that they were the same movie it was kind of it was really trippy I do want to talk about some things though we're gonna get into some serious stuff today because we see Joe, he seemingly, I think he, he cares about it. And I think, I think that was also great to see a teacher that cares about teaching and cares about their students. I think we saw that in Joe immediately. He's offered this full-time position with, you know, benefits and all this great stuff. And of course his mother's happy. She's like, finally, you'll give up this stupid dream, which I feel like we've all, we've all seen that storyline before. We've all, we've all heard that before that, you know, Art will never put food on the table. We've all kind of heard that. But you can see the sadness on his face when he's offered this position. He's just like, hmm, cool. Um, he wants to play full time, you know? And he has noticed, Connie specifically, has a knack for it, uh, for playing music. And he gets, you can see him getting lit up when he sees how great she is at it and how lost in the zone she got, you know? And I think it's funny that that's a, a reference to the in the zone that comes up in the film, but he was not excited to have that be his life. And then he gets this opportunity of a lifetime to play behind Dorothea Williams, you know, and then he immediately dies or he's not dead yet because he didn't go to the great beyond. He's like in that middle ground between life and death, like he's hanging on by a thread, but he falls into this manhole. I was very like, I was completely surprised because it happens very early on in the film, like he just flat out dies. And that's when he goes to the great before and he is mistaken for a mentor, which um, mentors are those who have not yet gone into the great beyond. They are going to men mentor the infant souls or the uh, unborn souls to get them ready to go to earth. A funny scene that was like, the four of you will be insecure and the other 15 will be self-absorbed. <laughs> I thought that was very funny, but he's mistaken for this uh, mentor, a doctor who's like won Nobel prizes, has had a great life. You know, his life has quote unquote meant something. Then he can't get back to earth without an earth badge. So they don't get an earth badge. And they go to Moonwin, which I think is interesting because this movie also talked about so many other different things from like chakras and like all this other, stuff and uh, meditating, things like that, centering yourself, finding that, you know, aligning your inner self. I thought it was very interesting. It was cool. I feel like this movie was kind of for everyone. It felt like it was for everyone. 
Which is why I kept seeing it so trippy because it was something like it felt so out of body. Then he just jumps back into his body, but then jumps into a cat. And I was like, you're kidding me, right? He couldn't, he couldn't have been in his body. Not really. Okay, that's cool too. We're in a cat now. Who's in Joe's body? If Joe's in the cat, 22. I don't want to sugarcoat it, you know? Joe Gardner, black male, 22. We don't know what body she jumped into, but 22, voiced by white woman. So now we have a white woman in a black man's body. She is living his life. And it was interesting because she sees everything in a different way. And I don't know if that's supposed to be a commentary on something. Don't know. But interesting. Just, just think about it. Just, just think about it. Like I said, I think that this team put a lot of effort into making a more um, thought-provoking story and a more realistic story. And I was super excited to see a positive representation of black men. But with that, getting into the story, just think about how many times have we seen people of color in these types of transformative stories where they are physically transformed. And I think that that is something we need to talk about. So I have posted some very thought-provoking articles below because one of them is a review and one of them is just kind of a commentary on a history of this trope that has been going on in films. And it was it, one of the articles I read, it said that Pete Doctor didn't even know this was a trope that happened. And that is people of color transforming into other things. We all know this example best, I think, through Princess and the Frog. I think I think that they did a beautiful job in terms of this animation and making it feel like a more realistic story about African-American families, uh, many things that were said, the way they spoke to each other, the way they talked, you know, it was, it felt real. It felt, it felt real. But I will say I felt like Joe Gardner took a back seat ever so slightly to 22. They both had to find their reasons for living, you know? They both did. It's interesting because Joe is also willing to die so that 22 can have their life because he's already lived his life, right? But I also thought was interesting and uh, one of them said that this movie was close to being a white savior movie, which if you're not ready to talk about it, maybe this is the chance for you to exit the channel. But um, I thought that was a very interesting thing that I didn't even think of. I didn't even see it that way. I was just like, Whoa. So I want to point out some really interesting things in relation to this movie, and that's what I'm talking about, getting to the soul of soul. I do think that it had a great message, um, but I think we need to talk about some things. So let's do that. So um, in this article that I posted uh, below, it talks about just the excitement that, that came with seeing someone who looked like yourself in a film. And he talks about being so excited to see someone who like looked like him. Um, in film. And this came out in July, guys. This is an old article. If you haven't read it yet, please, I recommend, give a read. One of the lines was, you know, we did see some really great, strong persons of color in the lead in films like Pocahontas, Mulan, and Aladdin. Even though Pocahontas took some liberties, we do get to see this strong female character take a lead and take a stand, right? Then we have to talk about the other films because this, it was interesting because this article pointed out something for me that I didn't even realize. You know, it's not just Prince and the Frog. And it wasn't just Spies in Disguise, which Will Smith turns into a pigeon. But I didn't even think about this one. Coco. Miguel turns into a skeleton and is not fully human until closer to the end of the movie. Emperor's New Groove is turned into a llama. Again, he has this personal transformation of heart, but doesn't have it without a physical transformation. And also this one kind of cracked me up because I didn't even realize and think about it, but brother bear. Kenai turns into a bear, but also decides to stay a bear. But again, has this personal transformation accompanied by this physical transformation, which then does not enable people to fully see themselves represented, right? I'm not gonna say that these movies are bad, they're not. As this article also mentions that, on the other hand, some people really do see themselves in these characters. But what are we teaching, right? What are we teaching? But then on the flip side, you have movies like Moana and shows this positive, strong female character, also a person of color, right? She's herself the entire time. So I think it poses a very strong question of do we, must we 
have to leave our own bodies to understand them, to know them, right? So that's what I kind of mean that I think that Joe took a back seat. Joe's not in his body the entire film, you know? Someone else takes his body. He takes a cat's body at some point, you know? He dies as the second he gets close to his dream, like he's on the verge of death, right? And it's only in almost dying that he realizes the meaning of his life, which, you know, I think many people probably can have those moments. But there were also moments uh, in one of the other articles that I posted below, Joe being mistaken for Paul. You know, this, oh, I mistaked you for this other black person, sorry. That could be the reviewer being nitpicky. I don't think so, but it can be perceived that way. And so I think the biggest thing I want to say is this empathy thing, right? Even if you didn't see it that way, someone else may have seen it that way. And just take a step back and think about that. Again, I, I already have a shirt for this film. I liked this film. But again, we have to acknowledge both sides of the coin here, right? And so I just want people to take a step back and think about it. Did this movie make you think? And I think that um, at times art is supposed to challenge you. And I think that this movie in particular challenged me to think about things. I think that it just, it brought up so many different things to address in our personal lives, in our, <laughs> in our professional lives, in relation to other people. I thought it was a, it was a great movie. I think overall it was a great movie, but I don't think that we cannot talk about the hard thing. It, it seemed to have resonated with a lot of people. I think a lot of people loved this film. We all watch art to relate and we love art and we, we seek it out at some points because we like to see ourselves represented in certain ways. We see qualities of ourselves in 22 probably, in Joe Gardner, in Libba, you know, in that mother that just wants the best for her child. Yeah, so I just wanted to get to the soul of soul and also just the soul of entertainment because this movie I think brought up a lot of a lot of different things and so even if you know this would have never occurred to you watching soul I want you to just take a second to think about that again I think this movie was great I'm not bashing this film in any way shape or form I'm just bringing awareness to things surrounding this film and things to think about and I think that this movie brought a lot of joy to a lot of people in a very sad year and I, I think it challenges us to think about how people are viewed and it left me with some questions like who's Lisa I want to see Lisa what's up with her what's she doing why isn't Joe calling her I did feel like the ending too was like kind of abrupt I don't know about that I feel like I forgot to mention that I felt like the ending was a tad abrupt you know he gets one more chance he goes back to earth but then like what does he do he doesn't go back to the he doesn't go back to being in the band. Like he just walks out of his house and does something. Like what is he doing? I wanna know what Joe's doing. So I felt like we got a soul two coming, personally. Anyways, it's a Disney themed episode and that means you get a Disney fun fact with every Disney themed episode. And I actually forgot to give a Disney fun fact two weeks ago, so you're gonna get two today. And since the one last Disney episode was a announcements video, I decided my Disney fun fact for that one would just be an announcement because it was not brought up at all in my video or addressed in the article I linked below, but I know we've all heard about the new Cruella de Vil film that is supposed to be coming out. And so my Disney fun fact for last week is that Cruella is set to debut in theaters on May 28th of 2021. My Disney fun fact for today's episode is about Soul. Soul was actually developed about four or five years ago. And while in its production, they actually kind of went back and forth about what Joe's career would be. Joe Gardner's character was not always a musician. They did kind of jump around with the idea of him being an actor or a scientist, but they realized that no one goes into jazz to be rich and famous. That's a direct quote, by the way. And that jazz is something that you're passionate about. They chose a jazz musician to help make Joe's character feel more selfless. Those are my Disney fun facts for today. So on to the show, Tune Spotlight. I obviously today wanted to go with something from Soul. As I mentioned earlier, the jazz compositions and arrangements were by John Baptiste. The original score was by Trent Reznor and Atticus Ross. And uh, while it featured some very interesting uh, titles like The Collard Greens and Cornbread Strut, I decided to go with a simple one. They're obviously all instrumentals for the most part. I decided to go with Looking at Life. I don't remember where exactly this occurs in the film, 
but I think that the point of my video today was just to look at your life and to look at it in relations to others. I say be kind at the end of each episode for a reason and it's because we need to look at um, our lives and how we're living them in relation to others in terms of kindness, in terms of empathy and um, try to spread that. So I think that soul, I think that that is the theme for the film is looking at life. What are you doing with yours? How are you spending each day? And um, live life to the fullest, right? I think that was one of the biggest things that the film tried to ingrain in our heads was living life to the fullest. And I highly recommend just watch the film. Uh, it's good. And think about the hard questions. I think when you watch any film, think about the hard questions, right? And uh, if you spent your Christmas watching Wonder Woman instead, that's cool too. So thank you. And uh, be kind. <laughs>